Hello members of the clan, let's go to the knockout day high court in the sense of Meiwa murder trial and there is drama in the court. We're having a judge that seems to, I don't know if he is an enemy of the constitution, particularly section 35 of the constitution, because what Advocate Nisi is placing on the table has constitutional uh, implications. Even Judge Cameron, the former constitutional court uh, judge, he wrote a letter to the um, judge president of the Nohai, or I mean of the Houghton Division, basically letting him know that the conditions that uh, Mr. Mube is having at the Jose Mampuri uh, prison is inhumane, unconstitutional. And as a result of that, uh, Rata feels like Mube needs to make an application to the court because of separation of powers where the court cannot intervene with what the correctional services uh, practices are. And, uh, and in my head, I'm like, but wait, sir, wait, this is a constitutional matter, meaning that you as the high court of this country, you supposed to say, okay, because this matter is a constitutional matter, this is an order that I am going to make. Let us adjourn. Let accused number three go and make that application, find himself a lawyer, and then proceed and hear what the uh, the court that is going to hear his application uh, decides. And then we come back and resume this particular trial. That is what he's supposed to do because you know why? Because he's supposed to respect section 35 of the constitution where it is a fundamental constitutional right of accused number three to have a fair trial. He is saying, my mind is not focused on this trial because in my head, I am tortured about my conditions when I leave this very court going back there. So meaning since 2019 to date, can you imagine as a human being being put in a situation like that where you're not interacting with people, you are not getting any outside information, you're not getting visitors, uh, nothing. Basically, you are in this dark room into Abyss and your thoughts. And at this point, do you think he is even a normal person? Should he be like right now, what the judge should have done, ordered that uh, a psychologist or a psychiatrist begins to see him? As per uh, Judge Cameron's uh, letter, they say nobody ought to be in solitary confinement after 90 days. Even the Mube says that since he's been in there, all the people that were sentenced to, con uh, to solitary confinement have even been dis uh, discharged from there, but he remains there. And then he says that uh, apparently the prison told him the reason why they're putting him there is because of this trial. And then he's asking a fair question that, like, wait a minute, then if this, uh, I mean, solitary confinement and because of this Senzo Meiwa uh, murder, then why is it that my co-accused are not in solitary confinement? Which goes back to fairness. How is this trial fair? Why is this judge feel so paralyzed to exercise the constitution that actually gives him the power to override the correctional service? At least care eh, by postponing this matter until Mube has had a lawyer that he, Judge Rata, is advising him to do to go and make an application to a point where he said, okay, fine, then he needs to go make an urgent application. And Mr. Nisi is like, I don't think the court understands the, the gravity of the situation. The gravity of the situation here, it has everything to do with human rights as well as constitutional rights. But Judge Rata says, no, I understand. I don't think you do, sir. I don't think you do because you have power invested in you as a high court to stop this. Okay, suspended, fine, okay, because you said stop, and yet Mr. Nisi did also try to re-define what he meant by that. That suspend this process until Mr. Mube has concluded and exhausted this application that you're advising him on to do. What am I missing? What are we missing? So I'm beginning to think that Judge Rata has a huge problem with uh, constitutional democracy. This is about a man's mental situation right now.
And he is saying, no, but I am humane about it. I am understanding. And he, Mr. Mube had to beg for mercy of the courts to relieve him from this situation because now we adjourned. And uh, the adjournment, this is uh, Mr. Mnise asking for the adjournment so that he can speak to the Legal Aid Board since the Legal Aid Board is the representative or legal representative of accused number three. And so Baloy, like the boss that he is, is like, oh, well, it is, uh, what time? Uh, the 5 to 11, we can come back at half past 11. Instead of saying himself, as an advocate, as the officer of the law who went to law school where he was taught about South Africa's constitutional democracy. And he's supposed to say, uh, as the state, we want to respect the constitution and the principle of a fair trial, section 35 of the constitution. We don't mind to adjourn until accused number three has concluded this situation. And then Rata is like, well, I have never heard of such a request that a, a trial must be suspended because, and then Mr. Mrs. is like, yeah, it's also for the first time for this court to hear that a detainee has been in solitary confinement for the past five years. I mean, honestly, when you think about it, let it sink in. Solitary, can you handle solitary confinement even for 90 days? Because apparently that's the sentence. And once the 90 days has expired, you need to be uh, taken out of there. Because beyond that, it will be in violation of the fundamental constitutional rights. And then Mr. Rata does also advise Mr. Mnisi to read the case of uh, uh, the Minister of, Con of Constitutional Ju I mean, uh, the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Development versus Nduli 2023, where Mr. Nduli was uh, complaining about not being given an opportunity to study by being given a laptop and Wi-Fi connection so that he can study. And apparently this is a comprehensive decision by the judge that he, he quoted. So basically, let me read some of the things that I've written down regarding this. So the court opened with Mr. Mnisi. And basically, this is the judge uh, reminding the court where we ended when we adjourned uh, on the 22nd of September. Uh, he opened by basically uh, reminding the court, this is the judge, that his client has been uh, is complaining of being in solitary confinement and only has one hour of sunlight out of 24 hours. Cameron wrote to judge president regarding judges and ordering to define exactly the 90 days and what thereafter happens after 90 days. Uh, basically, the whole psychology and psychological um, uh, stability or condition of the person that is taken to this solitary confinement for 90 days. Persons taken to mental evaluation Pre, uh, pre and after the 90 days. Some detentions uh, or, or some detainees are experiencing inhumane conditions, no consideration for the constitutional right. Sometimes the Bill of Rights is compromised, just like this court is doing to accuse number three, Section 35, fair trial, right? Uh, there are lots of violations that are being uh, committed uh, in the correctional services. Uh, it continues to say that uh, then Mr. Mnisi uh, continues to ask to talk about the current trial that he cannot be in two places at the same time. JP uh, has um, okay. JP says that there's a, this is a comprehensive infringement of the Bill of Rights. What is happening to Mubem? All right, and um, most compre okay, that, that one I've already said. Let's go on to this one. Then he says, uh, bring an application to court for the Bill of Rights to be tested. Basically, this is Judge Rata advising Mr. Mnisi that he can uh, make an application so that a court can hear Mube's situation and make an order. Ndanzi, then uh, Mr. Mugomezulu stood up on uh, accused number one who needed his ID back because the kids are now going to university and uh, they need to apply for NFSAS and his a copy of the ID is uh, needed. Baloy then said to the court, well, it is part of evidence and uh, Mr. Um, Sibia can make an application. I was like, but, uh, but anyways, he does come back and says that 
But the, when he was arrested, he was arrested for the Tembisa case, not for this case. But Balo is adamant that no, an application still needs to be made. Uh, then uh, accused number one says ID was um, was taken uh, because of the Tembisa case, not for the Senzo Meiwa. Then judge says, uh, can't a copy be made? Baloy says, no problem with that, uh, to, but it can be arranged between uh, the state and Mr. Mgome Zulu, but we will come to a compromise. But Mr. Mgome Zulu was quite adamant about the uh, copy of the ID. Uh, Mr. Mube says uh, he can no longer take it. This is now Mr. Nisi coming back and telling the court after his consultation with his client, he says that he cannot take it any longer. He requests that uh, this trial uh, be suspended. Judge then laughs. I mean, he literally laughs when he hears that. I know, um, and then he says, I know of a political party who wants things to stop. I don't know, I think he's talking about MK party or whatever, uh, regarding the JSC that is holding a meeting today. Then Mr. Mnisi uh, clears what he meant by stop the um, this trial. Basically, he wanted to be, uh, now he's just uh, uh, improvising that he meant the trial to be suspended. Just says, uh, so you don't, you, you don't want this trial to be dissolved because, oh, so you want this trial to be dissolved because you want it to stop. Then Mr. Mnisi said, no, I did not say that. I am saying that um, we need to make an application and in order to make this application, we are requesting that this process be suspended. Then judge says that I've never heard of a trial suspended. And then Nisi comes back with a clap back and says, it is for the first time that this court uh, comes across an accused who's been detained in solitary confinement for four years. So there's a first for all of us. And he's expected to formulate a defense in full in his full faculties meaning the defense that he's currently attending to and that is unfair judge says in the interest of justice does not allow this to happen there are five other uh, there are four other accused uh, there's witnesses evidence and all of that and he says he cannot sit in this trial until he dies separation of trial that was introduced by mr Mnisi, and the judge was not having it he was not having because he was asking about evidence that is going to be presented in the absence of accused number three if this is what he is requesting Mnisi does not um then mr Mnisi looks at the the court and says that it does not look like the court understands the gravity of the situation just says i do i do this is simple make an application he is really adamant about the application. Mr. Mnisi then says, I can't be part of two different processes, which is true. And also, accused number three can't be in two processes at the same time either. That is unfair. Just says, I can't assent to that request. So basically, he ruled against Mr. Mnisi's request or accused number three's request. Mnisi then uh, comes back to the judge and says, this is a psychological issue. A man who has been in solitary confinement for the past four years. So basically, he is saying that you, you need to adhere to the constitution of the country. That in order for a person to be in a trial, they need to be in their full faculties. That means they need to be sound and, and, and fit to continue with the trial. But no, Judge Rattas doesn't. it's flying over his head. Then Mr. Mgome Zulu stood up once again and says the state's case was based on Section 31, so he does not see why his ID is being kept by the state. But no, he was like, I thought we had already resolved this. Just send an email. Then Charles says, I can, I'm even prepared to make an order. So basically, he wants to uh, rule in favor of the state that if Mr. Mgome Zulu continues with this, he's ready to say to Mr. Mgome Zulu, this send an email to the state and uh, this will be resolved. And then Mnisi once again stood up and says, he says that, and th this is after he has consulted with Mr. Mube, he says, he says that he's been in solitary confinement since 2019. Other people that were in solitary confinement along with him since 2019 have since been dismissed from the solitary confinement, but he remains there. And then he says that, he was told by the Jose Mampuru management that he is in this 
uh, sorry to confirm it because of this case, the Senzo Meiwa. Then he says that if it's so, then how come his co-accused are not in solitary confinement as well. He begs the court for to have mercy. He says that he can't even pay attention to this very trial. So basically he's telling this court that this, I feel it's unfair that I'm sitting in a court while my conditions, uh, living conditions in a detention center are inhumane. Just says, let him lodge an urgent application then. Balois stands up and says, well, separation of power, nonsense. And then just says, can we continue? Then Mr. Mnissi is like, I cannot continue. There's no way I can cross-examine the current um, witness when I know that I have two processes that, that I need to uh, to take on my shoulders. And I think he's trying to also say that Mr. Mnissi cannot afford me, just him, because right now he is, uh, Mr. Mnissi is being paid by the legal aid board. So that is why in the end he says, okay, can I request an adjournment so I can speak to the legal aid board because uh, uh, Mr. Mnissi is their client. So meaning that he will go and present himself that I am willing to continue being his attorney for the new application while also uh, being his attorney in this trial. I don't think that, that the legal aid board is going to agree to that. Maybe the legal aid board itself is going to say, well, we don't mind giving him a free uh, state lawyer to go and make this urgent application. But for me, all in all, this judge, he is being, he is stifling the constitution. Not that he's even stifling the constitution. He doesn't respect the constitution. This is not a fair trial, I've been saying. But it's still adjournment. When they return, of course, I will come back and give you the full um, stuff that is going to happen after this break. So stay tuned and do not leave this video without liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And when you do subscribe, make sure to click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And I appreciate you guys so much for the super thanks. They are coming in like this. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And be blessed. I will see you guys a little bit later. Goodbye.